before we go on to 2021, we have to put a wrap on 2020. And that's where I'll hand over to you, Scott, because you mm. said we should also do something else. Yes. So we are going to look at players. OK, so we're going to look at the the awards um, in terms of who we think should be getting the MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and we'll do the Rookie of the Year as well. Um, we'll also do the head coach. Um, I would like to know who you think the uh, recipient of the Scott and Chris um, Coach of the Year will go to. Okay, um, I'm going to get out of there first of all. I don't think he'll win, but I've got a bit of a homer pick for Mike Tomlin. I think that he is drafted, I, I, albeit maybe Mike Tomlin's not responsible for all of the draft picks that the Steelers pick, but I think that going from the team they were a year ago, and also partly to give credit for the team that they were a year ago, I know that that's not how it works. Um, I think that the, the progression that they've made this year is one of the best progressions in the NFL. I think it was the third best win increase behind the Browns and the Dolphins. Um, but I'm seeing that as a complete homer. I think if I was to give the award to anyone okay another honorable mention i'm sorry um i don't think you can go through this season without commending the job that ron rivera has done with all of his health problems he's taken washington to the playoffs despite the fact that he was getting actual cancer treatment in between his training sessions i think that's phenomenal especially with what he's pulled out of alex smith um riverboat ron has always been a badass and now he's a badass in life as well so um i would totally give it to him but if i was giving it to anyone um do you know what? Andy Reid doesn't need it. It has to be Sean McDermott. Um, he helped. I, I watched this thing. I think it was on Sunday Night Football a couple of weeks ago or maybe Monday night where they explained how the staff at Buffalo have like changed the way that um, Josh Allen like stands and physically moves his body. And that's yep. the reason his passer uh, yep. rating has increased so much in his completion percentage. Um, they've brought in some phenomenal players to build around Josh Allen. Um, they've destroyed the division this year. Nobody even came close to touching them. Um, they've stopped a dynasty um, in the form of the Patriots. Obviously, Patriots had a hand in stopping themselves. Um I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a Buffalo fan watching this and knowing you've got this. Like, has, has there been any point ever in your entire life where you've been like, oh, Sean McDermott, that guy's an arsehole. Like, I've never thought that. I've thought that about so many coaches. I've thought that about your head coach, John Harbaugh. I've thought that about my head coach. I've thought that about so many. Like, there's never been a point where I've doubted Sean McDermott. So I would give him coach of the year. Excellent. Um, I think it's a really uh, hotly contested race this year. Um, I think this has been the season, the first season in many years where I, I actually don't know who they're going to go. Um, I'd also like to commend Ron Rivera. Um, I think there's two coaches in the NFC who deserve to be in the conversation. I think Ron Rivera is one of them for the reasons that you've mentioned. And I'm going to leave the other one for a second. I'm going to come back to him because I do think he might win. Um, I think Andy Reid doesn't need it, but 14 and 2, good job. Can't look uh, past it. You just can't look past it. Like Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think. Looking down a little bit, I'm really impressed with Brian, with, uh, Brian Flores and how he's doing loads for black coaches. Like, you know, he's, he's maybe like the first successful black coach in the NFL and that's going to open up so many more doors for more, which is just terrific. Um, and the Dolphins look a completely different team from when, since, since he's taken over them. Um, they're heading into next year, like, you know, probably playoff contenders. So... Yeah, re really, really good work there. It's obviously not enough for Coach of the Year, but I just want to mention that. Um, Mike Tomlin as well. Of course, we can't talk about black coaches without talking about the, you know, Mike Tomlin. Um, and yeah, he's done such a such a great job this year. Um, no one expected it. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think Mike Tomlin is in with a shout. I think if you'd have if you'd have steered the end of the season right it'd be a no-brainer um i love all the things you've said about um sean mcdermott it's all about technical with him and it's all about technical with the bills it's not that they've got the best roster it's just they're technically better than any other team in the, the in, in the nfl they're like the the dean malenko of the, of the nfl <laughs> um, it may not be flashy but it's it's better <laughs> yeah um so i think sean mcdermott deserves it but you you can't for me look past um Matt Lafleur, like I've literally got him highlighted in front of me because I knew that's that's where it was going. Heading into this year, you just after the draft, you thought, "Holy cow, the the that's it. The Packers are a dumpster fire. This is it for Rodgers. Like they're going to force him out." 
And Matt Lafleur's gathered all the troops together with Rogers, and they've gone, nah, fuck this noise. Like let, let let's actually turn around and just like shut every single person up. And they've done it the best in the NFL this year for me. Um, so I think it's between Lafleur, McDermott, and um, I'd also say uh, Tomlin as well. Nice one. Um, I think the only reason I couldn't give it to Matt Lafleur is it could be argued that they wasted the pick. Um, but what what would that pick being um, placed any differently on is this? Is that down team? to him though? Like, no, like how do we know exactly. that the, the like this, that call? If you pick anyone else, how does it change what the Packers achieved this year? So it almost doesn't matter, doesn't it? Like if you could you could even make the argument, oh, if they draft a wide receiver, it might upset the success of of what they did this year. So yeah, yeah. you're absolutely spot on. I saw that coming a mile away. Who's next? Uh, let's talk about the rookie of the year. Um, it's been it's been a really really good year for people coming into the league. Um, I'd love to know kind of who who you've been really impressed by. I think the winner is really obvious, but let's talk about who you've been impressed by. I think that um, a, a fun thing about our relationship, Scott, is that I'm always really hard on rookies. Like I'm always like, this guy's a jobber. He's never achieved anything in his life, and he's like just won a Super Bowl or something like that. Um, I am going to echo something that I think that Colin Cowherd said a few months ago and that we have reached this beautiful golden age season in the NFL where we're getting some brilliant football from some of the older guys in the league like Brady, Breeze, um, uh, Rogers, um, Roethlisberger, Rivers, like they're all playing at a high level. Whereas the middle level guys are all playing at a high level as well. And yep. on top of that, the guys that have came in and are playing their first year have all done quite well as well. So like it is, there's been a lot of great play and a lot of great play from rookies. So I, for once, am completely shut up on this argument. But I'm really, really excited to see the winner of the Justin Herbert Rookie of the Year Award go to <laughs> Justin Herbert. I think he's done very, very well this year. Um, all the records he's broken as a Charger, all the ro records he's broken as a rookie, I think he has more than earned it. I, I can't even properly, offensively, I can't even think of someone who really comes close to him. Like, Burrow got injured. Um, who else would you even have in this conversation? Like, Hearts isn't winning any awards. Neither is uh, Tungo in this chat. Like, in terms of um, skill position players, you maybe got someone like CD Lamb. Eh, not really. Um, so yeah, it's, it's got to be, and it's so good that they named the award after him. <laughs> well, I agree. I think Herbert's got it. Um, but I'll I'll give shout outs to three players. Two of them are are very um are very um indulgent, but I think one of them is is legit. So I want to give a shout out to J.K. Dobbins for us, mm -hmm. who's come in and somehow taken the job off Mark Ingram and really impressed me. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Chase Claypool, who has had yeah. a phenomenal season for the Steelers and um, will no doubt send Juju back to his mum's basement with his Game Boy Advance. Fucking Juju. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to give a really special shout out to Justin Jefferson, who I think legitimately... If Herbert had had a couple of bad weeks, we could be talking about Jefferson here. Um, Jefferson's kept it up. He's heading into next year with the Vikings looking like an absolute stud already. Yep. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic year for rookies. Uh, C.D. Lamb's been great. Jonathan Taylor running back at um, the Colts. Really scary. Um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire hasn't really been the central piece, but every time he's been on the ball, he's looked really good for the Chiefs. Um, it's been a really impressive year. It has has to be said. Um, now let's let's move away from offensive and talk about defensive uh, players. Um, again, this should be quite a quick one. But defensive player of the year, who do you have? Oh, man, it's difficult because um, I read this thing that like um, Aaron Donald is on a down year, but his stats are still better than everybody else in the league. But I also don't like Aaron Donald. Like, his face just makes me think he's a bit of a dick. So I'm not going to give it to him. And there's also something which I think might be true. And I don't know what you think of this. Um, that there's a sort of um, repeat award issue in the NFL where they, they, they won't give it to Aaron Donald this year because he's won it, like, so many times. It happened with J.J. Watt, as I'm sure you remember, that, like, there's a couple of scenes where you're like, hang on, wasn't J.J. the best player? Um, so I've got to be a homer 
on this one. I was so impressed with them. Um, I'm the most, most critical person of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like no one is more critical of them than me. I will criticize every single play, but there's been very little to criticize this year about TJ Watt. I've loved everything he's done. He's become a proper leader on our team. Um, I think he is... He did it last season as well. He pretty much single-handedly won the Steelers a bunch of those eight games um, that they scraped by with the Duck and uh, Rudolph. And this year, that combined with the strength of play of Ben Roethlisberger in specific weeks had led the Steelers to the win record that they have. And they would have they would be nowhere near what they did this year if it wasn't for him. The issue was this year was um, the other outside linebacker, Devin Bush, who went down injured in week 12. That led to... Uh, TJ Watt just getting double covered and his stats dropped for like the last five games which I feel like if we had a um, a good enough person to go in and back up Devin Bush then that wouldn't have happened and the the the, the strength of TJ would have continued so I really hope he still gets it and it doesn't go to, to Donald um, I think Donald's just more than willing and more than um, deserving of the award um, but I really hope it's TJ this year and honourable mention of course to your boy Chase Young who I think will get and I don't know if this award exists but does defensive Defensive Rookie of the Year? Yeah, nah, think, I'm not sure if, if that exists he should win that um, but yeah TJ for me Cool um, Yeah I mean TJ what has to win it I think as you say he's been a complete leader he's been a vocal leader as well not just on the field but also in press conferences and things like that, talking about how the team's coming together. I also want to give a shout-out to Minka Fitzpatrick, which is looking like one of the best deals in the past like couple of years in the NFL, how you traded away a first-rounder for him, but it's like you would never have been able to draft a Minka Fitzpatrick anyway. Mm -hmm. Like that, That's just been a, fan a fantastic addition to, to your defense. Um, I don't want to give it to Aaron Donald. I think there's other players to talk about as well. Xavier Howard up in Miami yes. has been doing extremely good stuff. Um, every single week. I've been a big fan of how Miles Garrett's comeback's been at the Browns as well, helping them towards the playoffs. Um, and you know what? This player is Can we just pause a second on, um, uh, on him? Like, how he's progressed as a person since that incident last year as well has really impressed me. Like, I, as soon as that happened, I was like, get him out of the NFL. He should ne never be here ever again. Um, he, I, it reminded me of all those incidents that we had with other Bengals players. Um uh, like Dunlap and who's the other one that me and you collectively just hated for years? Oh, um, um, the uh, yeah, I but, can't remember. And I'm just, really glad I can't remember. It just reminded me of them. It just reminded me of asshole NFL players. And um, I think that 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 instant has now been completely put to bed. And he, more importantly, has showed up performance-wise, and he has done for the Browns what I think TJ has done for the Steelers. Yeah, um, I'm also going to give two. Two more shout outs who are nowhere near the kind of like odds on for for this award. But um for us, because I'm a Ravens fan, I have to I have to talk about Ravens defense, which is always consistent. Marlon Humphrey is now elite. I'm not having any other way about it. Any team comes in to play us, they are scared of of, of Marlon Humphrey and they're scared of Marcus Peters. Like we yeah, we are sorted there. But I really want to give a special shout out to the Colts' Darius Leonard, who is a complete and utter monster. <laughs> um, and I, I can't wait for a YouTube highlights package with a Flo Rida song in the background <laughs> um, that's going to come out of this season. Because, Not yeah. Darius Colorblind? <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Darius Leonard's been good. But no, it has to be TG Watt. It has to be. Um, so yeah, that is our defensive uh, player of the year. Let's talk about offensive player of the year. So, good God, yeah. The obviously the rule around defensive player of the year is you don't give it to the same player you're going to give MVP to. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Very very difficult. Um, okay, going by that rule, then. <sighs> right, I I think this is a cop out. Mm. Um, but I think this one might have to go to Mahomes. Um, a lot, a lot of that because um, he has led the Chiefs almost single-handedly to the wins that they have got. Like all of those close games has been down to him. Whereas, like his numbers aren't as sky high as the person who will win MVP. Um, and the offensive player of the year award normally goes to the 
quarterback of the pl- player of the the quarterback of the team with the best record. So I'm going to absolutely cop out and say Patrick Mahomes, but it should absolutely go to Deshaun Watson. Yeah, so so Deshaun, yeah, 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 I know, I know exactly what you mean, but you you can't give it to a player that's played for a four and twelve team, can you? you? Just can't. It's never going to happen. No, um, I think um, you can also look at uh, well, I mean, if we go through sort of like skill positions first, right? I'm not sure if any wide receivers done enough for me to earn the award this year. I think Devontae Adams has been exceptional, but really, you don't get Devontae without Aaron. So difficult to do that. Hopkins had a decent year, but, you know, I don't think a wide receiver's really stood out for me. Running backs, on the other hand, I think you could really make a case for Derrick Henry, who's just... Oh, how could I forget? With, without any sort of noise, has just ploughed his way to into the, was it top five of all time in terms of rushing yards in a single season? Really impressive. Um, certainly, you know, him and Tannehill have been the key cogs in getting the Titans to the playoffs and putting them in a good position there. Um, I think um, for me, um, I don't know if it's all Tomlin, but Big Ben deserves a shout for Offensive Player of the Year. Um, you know, like again, the, the comeback there, I mean, maybe he's going to win Comeback Player of the Year instead, but the comeback there has been exceptional and deserves to be rewarded for me. Um, I think Mahomes is in with a shout as well. Josh Allen's in with a shout because if you're going to talk about MVP and you're going to give it to somebody else, which I imagine is going to be the case, then Josh Allen maybe deserves the shout for Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I think that's maybe it. Russell Wilson again, potentially you could go him. Um, I don't think either uh, Breeze or Brady have really done enough to be in the, co- mm-hmm. the the conversation for me. So yeah, I think the only player worthwhile in the NFC is maybe Wilson for it. But for me, it has to be Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Big Ben or Derek Henry, I think. I'm going to switch allegiance to Derek Henry. And not just because you said a better answer than me, but because that reminds me of a situation that has happened um, in 20. 20- 15 or thereabouts I do believe it was the year that Peyton Manning smashed the league with the Broncos and AP um, nearly broke the Russian record do you remember that Mm. yeah that year they did exactly what I want to happen this year they gave AP the offensive rookie of the year award and they gave Peyton the MVP I think or the exact opposite either way (laughs) it should be um, it should definitely be Derek Henry and someone else who we'll talk about yeah, cool. Well, let's just talk about it. MVP. Oh, we've not done comeback though. Oh well, okay. Big Ben, your turn. Do you think it's that simple? And do you think that it's not Alex Smith? Yeah, because like I get the Alex Smith thing, but Big Ben has literally led you to twelve and four mm. in a in a division that has the Ravens in it. I think that I don't want to be a homer on this, um, but I'd love that to be true. When 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 I saw Ben get injured, I was like, oh man, he's got to be comeback player of the year next year. But I feel like everyone's clamoring for it to be Alex Smith. And it's difficult. Like, are the NFL people that make these decisions bastards? Are they going to put it down to actual like player success? Or are they going to put it back down to like feel good story? Um, we'll have to wait and see um i'd love ben to get it. i'd absolutely love ben to get it because he's never going to going to get an nfl mvp because he's too much of a gunslinger like he's too yep. much of a guy that will take chances and throw interceptions and i don't mind that like i'm fine with that because it's the style of play that steelers have but um yeah it's definitely between those two i'd also give a give a special recommendation to, or, or special commendation sorry to uh cam but more importantly and i cannot believe i'm saying this but philip rivers Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, um, to 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 go from what what happened in his performances last year into an eleven and five team is impressive. Yeah, totally. Well, let's do it. Right, MVP. Okay. On, I- on three, two, one. Aaron Rodgers. Dwayne Haskins. No, it's <laughs> it's it's Aaron Rodgers, of course. It's absolutely, undoubtedly Aaron Rodgers. He's had the best season of, of his career. He's got a really good shot at winning the Super Bowl, although that's, you know, playoffs doesn't have any uh, impact on the end of season awards. Um, he's so much calmer now than he was, like, even at the start of the season, he was just being a bit of an asshole, but that's because he's such a competitor. And um, with the right pieces around him, finally... 
He stepped up this year, had one of the best seasons of his career, and is rightfully going to be voted the best player in the NFL. Perfect. Well, that has been our awards, <laughs> and we've decided every single starting quarterback in the NFL, whether they are fourth and in or fourth and out. Yes, and uh, that concludes um, our opening few episodes of Fourth and Out. Scott, what, I don't know what to talk about next time. Should we ever do this again? Should I just see you for the end of the season in 2021? I think I think that's what we should do, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for devoting so much of your time to this show. Thank you for wearing the exact same clothes as you wore in episode one. Um, if you enjoyed listening to this, please do comment us, DM us, anything, um, and let us know what you thought. Let us know stuff you'd like us to speak about in the future. Um, if you've got any negative thoughts, then go cram them right up your ass um, and enjoy the playoffs. I think they're going to be good. Scott, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Uh... Uh, the Chiefs. Cool. Um, maybe Packers. Maybe Steelers. Maybe Buccaneers. I don't up, genuinely think Steelers. Are up the Bills same. Mafia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, let's sign off. Bye, Scott. Thank you so much for all your time. Bye, Chris.